Hello everyone, it's Leah Renee. Welcome to the Sunday service at Greater New Psalmist Church. We appreciate you joining this service. Please like and share this service and subscribe to Breon Hall Ministries. Now, let's join the service already in progress. Hey everybody, welcome to our African Heritage Sunday. I'm so glad you decided to join us. Today is gonna be a remarkable day. Now, I'm preaching a sermon entitled Royalty Held Captive. And I know many of you that are watching have been going through your own places of captivity. But all today, you're gonna know that they were just trying to hold on to royalty and keep you from knowing who you really were. Stay tuned, it's coming up in a little while. Enjoy the worship, and then the word's gonna come forth. Royalty held captive. Come on in and enjoy yourself. Lord, open the eyes of my heart. I wanna see you. I wanna see you. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. Yeah, I want to see you. Can you help me say that? See, open the eyes. Say, open the eyes. Say, I want to. Say, I want to see you, yeah. Help me to say, open the eyes of my heart. Say, open the eyes. Say, I want to. Say, I want to see you. glory pour out your power and love as we sing holy 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 to see you see shining in the to pour out your power as we sing Open the eyes of my heart, I want to see you, yeah, I want to see you, say open the eyes of my heart, open the eyes, Lord, say I want to, say I want to. To see you, yeah. See shining in the pour out your power in love as we sing holy. Oh, to see you shining in the light of your glory. For all your power, as we sing holy, to sing you high, to shine in your glory. So pour out your power, we need you, God, as we holy, 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 as we sing. As we sing, help me lift up his name, your holy God. Say holy, 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 Lord. We join the angels in heaven, holy, yeah. holy. Holy, 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 
of my heart I want to see you yeah I want to see you yeah to see you high and lifted up shining in the light of your glory pour out your power and love as we sing to see you you're high and lifted up to pour out your power as we sing holy 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 as we sing holy holy as we sing yeah as we sing, oh, holy are you, Lord. As we sing, yeah. I want to see you. Do anybody else want to see him? I want to see you. Yeah, I want to see you. Yeah. I gotta see you. So open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I gotta see you. Yeah. I wanna see you. Yeah. So open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart, I want to see you, yeah, I want to see you, I want to lift up the name of Jesus, do anybody else want to see him on this morning, do anybody else need to see him on this morning, God we need you, we need you, we need you, yeah. Come on and lift up your hands and worship with me on this morning. God is truly, truly worthy of all of the praise and all the honor and all the glory on this morning. We love you, we love you, yeah. Nobody like you, Jesus, yeah. God Almighty, Lord of glory, oh, we worship you. God Almighty, Lord of glory, oh, we worship you. Oh, Lord, we have you oh, 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 oh lord we worship you see god almighty lord of glory oh we worship you see god almighty yeah Lord of glory, yeah. Oh, Lord, we. Oh. God Almighty, 
Nate Clint is here with us this morning. And we're so glad that the airman is here. And uh, I say to you, thank you for your service to our country, sir. And we pray uh, the blessings of the Lord over your life. Get your Bibles and lift it. Uh, this is my Bible. I am who it says I am. I can be what it says I can be. I can have what it says I can have. I am the righteousness of God. I serve notice on Satan that I am armed, should be considered dangerous. I am the first, not the last. I am above, I'm not beneath. I am who God says I am. I'm grateful to be a part of black America history and I'm thankful that I'm alive to see it. Psalm 137, Psalm 137, I'm going to lift the first four verses of Psalm 137 and it is my intent to be uh, as clinical as I uh, desire to be uh, theological today. Thankful to our band who's sharing with us in the worship experience this morning with a pleasant surprise uh, to have uh, of them in worship with us on uh, this morning. This is what Psalm 137 says, verses 1 through 4. This is what it says. By the rivers of Babylon, there we sat down, yea, we wept when we remembered Zion. We hanged our harps in the willows in the midst thereof, for they that carried us away captive required of us a song and they that wasted us required of us myrrh saying sing us one of the songs of Zion look at verse 3 again for they that carried us away required of us a song for they that carried us away captive required of us a song. And they that wasted us required of us myrrh. Saying, sing us one of the songs of Zion. Verse 4. How can we sing? The Lord saw in a strange land. How can we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? For the time that we will share together on this last Sunday of African Heritage Month, I want to preach as the Lord shall guide from this thought, royalty held captive. Royalty held captive. Look at that neighbor and say, neighbor, you are royalty. And I am royalty. And we were held captive. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Royalty held captive. Elder Josh, the problem that is continuously plaguing the African diaspora is that those that are responsible for our departures from our motherland are conscientiously fighting to keep us separate and disenfranchised while calling what they do to us equal and fair. Over the last several years, we have lived under this thought that everything is created equal and fair, except for those whose skin has been kissed by the sun. This dispensation has had the descendants of those who were brought here against their own will to lose sight of their dreams, their hopes, and to suffer under the sociological ills 
of segregation, deprivation, and enduring afflictions by our prejudiced counterparts who never desired to see us get ahead. I never understood how prejudiced America was until the last four years within this country that is for the land of the brave and the free. We have seen so many instances of disenfranchisements against people of color, people of other nationality. It appeared as if America was not only not great, but America was a horror story. America was living in the doom of its past. America was living in the glimmer of what was and never seemingly having the ability to come out of the dogma of our past, but rather it appeared as if history was repeating itself. This is in fact has caused many to fall by the wayside, making us appear to be the far laziest and culturally deprived individuals this country has ever produced. The reality, ladies and gentlemen, is that lazy is nowhere near the definition of what our forefathers were. How can you call us lazy when in fact, categorically, we have been the strongest and boldest and classiest that this world has ever encountered? How can we, how can they have the audacity to call us lazy and call us non-classy and non-bold when we walked in the strength that no one else has ever dared to walk in and walk with the audaciousness that no one else has never walked in and yet we were able to hold our heads up and declare I'm black and I'm proud. How can we be called lazy when our forefathers worked the longest hours and the hardest for the least amount of money? How can we be called dirty and nasty when we cleaned other people's homes and still took the time to clean our own? How can we be called poor parents with poor parenting skills when we took care of everybody else's children and still took the time to take care of our own children? Ladies and gentlemen, I'm afraid that America has sold us to be a lie. We have been written a check that has returned with insufficient funds. We have been made promises that have not been kept and we've been called everything but a child of God only to discover that there was something far greater inside of us than there was in any of the creature that has ever been created. When I was growing up, that was a nursery rhyme. Tyra, blah, blah, black sheep, have you any wool? Yes, sir, yes, sir, three bags full. One for the master, one for the dame, one for the little boy who lives down the lane. Blah, blah, black sheep, have you any wool? Yes, sir, yes, sir, three bags full. It was indicative, ladies and gentlemen, that the black wool or the black sheep of the family was in fact the most peculiar. Black wool, you never had to dye. You didn't have to put chemicals in it to change the texture of its color. And so whenever you were called the black sheep of the family, whenever you were called black or odd, in reality, you were called something special because nothing had to be done to your skin or your texture to make it balanced or toned or tanned because God created you that way in his image image and in his likeness as a matter of fact when you read the story of Jesus the Bible says he had hair like lamb's wool feet were like polished brass there was nothing that had to be done to the texture of who he was or the content of his skin and that's why you should be excited about who you are and never try to change your identity or your style or your 
hair or your texture of your skin and learn how to appreciate that this is the way that God has made me and I am unique. I need you to lay hands on yourself and tell yourself I am royalty. I, I, I am royalty. Ladies and gentlemen, our culture has endured more than any other culture or race in the world. And yet we are overcomers. We overcame it, Nate Clint. We are the prodigy of greatness and the progenitors of change. We have within us the ability to make a thing go right. We always excelled and at the top of anything that we did but ladies and gentlemen I came on assignment to make an announcement that America is going to have to change the way America has been viewing us but before America is going to change about how America has been viewing us we as a people must start looking in in the mirror and liking what we see and loving who we are and loving the fact that we got kinky hair and thick lips and thick hips we don't have to get injections to be something that we are not we were created by God to be the way that we are and ladies and gentlemen I need a person that's in the room and watching around the world uh, to look at somebody close to you uh, and tell them I am unashamedly Christian uh, and I'm uh, unapologetically black I know who I am uh, and I don't have to apologize about who I am I am the righteousness of God and ladies and gentlemen, we are the progenitors of change. Somebody shout, do it, Dr. Bree, do it. I'm trying to do the best that I can. The text that is before us, y'all, introduces us to those who were brought away against their own wills and desires, and yet they were expected to perform as if nothing was wrong. Y'all got to get this these trans indigenous individuals Judy are moved and yet they were told by those that held them we want y'all to be motivated uh, we done moved y'all from your country moved you from your appetite moved you from your language moved you from your people and in the midst of moving you we want you to act like you're motivated you've broken us but you want us to act like we still together you've hurt us but you want us to act like we are healed you've broken us but yet you want us to act like we still got it together and I need a praiser to open up your mouth and declare I've been bruised and battered but yet I'm not broken because the God I serve is a God of another chance and so these people were moved and they were expected to be motivated. They, they were moved and they were expected to act like they were happy about being moved. Verse 1 shows us, y'all, that they gave up they gave up in verse 1 Bishop Thompson two things should catch your attention one the scripture says they sat down they, they sat down. They refused to move. And by setting down, Sheila, they were given up. Never allow your posture to dictate what God is about to do next. Your posture denotes the fact that it looks like you are a quitter. You have stopped. You have given up. But I need a screamer in the sanctuary to open up your mouth and declare, don't allow what I look like to dictate who I am because I know that if God has made a way before, God can make a way again. They, they, they were moved, but yet 
They were expected to be motivated. And verse 1 shows that they sat down. Watch this. And they gave up. They sat. Watch the text. By the river, Josh, of Babylon. A place of refreshing. They gave up their instruments. Their unused, unwanted instruments. And I, I came on assignment to tell every praiser, whatever you go through, don't ever give up what you have learn how to praise God for what you have because when you praise God for what you have God can open the door and bless you with more they wept watch the text they wept when they remembered Zion and they they wept they wept when they remembered Zion. They wept when they remembered Jamar, the holy city. They wept when they remembered how wonderful it was in the sanctuary. They wept. They hung their harps in the willows. They, they were not slaves. These were saints. They were not criminals or trespassers. These were God's elect. I need you to wave at your neighbor for the first time and say, neighbor, I am God's elect. I'm, I'm trying to find my crowd. I, I need you to look at somebody behind you and tell them I am God's elect. Don't you ever be fooled by where I am currently because where I am currently is not where I'm going to stay. I am God's elect. They, they were not slaves. They were saints. They, they were not criminals or trespassers. These are I'm God's elect. Don't ever allow anyone to make you give up your gift or your talent. I need, I need you to find somebody behind you and tell them I've been going through hell lately but I'm not going to give up my gift. I'm not going to give up my talent. I, I'm not going to forget what the Lord gave me. The Lord gave me stuff that I didn't get myself and every chance I get I got to bless him. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, don't give up your gift. Don't give up your talent. Don't hang up your gift. I'm talking to somebody watching in Virginia. God says, don't give up your gift. Don't give up your talent. Don't walk away from your anointing. They sat by the river, a place of refreshing, and they gave up their unwanted, unused instruments. They wept when they remembered Zion. They hung their harps in the willows. They're not slaves, they're saints. They're not criminal trespassers. They are God's elect. They were looked on to be criminals and trespassers. And God says, I need you to stop looking at yourself by the way other people have defined you. I feel, I feel Jesus. We weep out to get our joy back. Nina, I need a praiser to open their mouth and thank God because you will not be defined by what others say about you. You are who God says you are. in the willows they gave up too soon somebody who's in this sanctuary somebody who's watching your problem is you gave up too soon uh, but I need you to lay hands on yourself and tell yourself I gave up but God didn't give up on me
quit. I quit, but God didn't quit me. I tried to walk away. I tried to never come back. And God says, I'm going to raise you back up. Here it is. Here it is. Here it is. Don't ever call me a misfit when I am not a misfit I've just been misplaced you could never handle who I really am so you try to make me what you want me to be you were misinformed and because you were misinformed you were about to miss out on the greatest thing that could ever happen to you I need somebody to open up your mouth and declare I am the When you read this text, their weeping, Sharnita, was blocking their ability to worship. Their weeping was blocking their ability. To worship. Their weeping was blocking, get this mother bird, their ability to worship. And their lack of worship turned into worry. I'm trying to find my worshipers in the building who have been through some stuff but you're not going to worry about where you've been you, you've been through some hell but you're not going to worry about where you've been you've been through some hurt and some disappointment but you don't worry about where you've been tell somebody I'm not going to worry because worry blocks my worship Tell, tell your neighbor, worry blocks worship. I'm trying to find my crowd that would open up your mouth and begin to worship where you are. You've been through the hurt and the pain. You've been through the difficulties. But open up your mouth. Begin to worship where God has brought you from. Tell your neighbor, I came to worship. Tell your neighbor, I came to worship. Tell your neighbor, I came to worship. For they that carried us away captive required of us a song look at verse 3 for they that carried us away captive required of us a song the ones that were guilty of trying to destroy us. All they wanted from us was entertainment. The ones that tried to wipe us out, all they wanted for us was a song and a dance and a twerk and a twist. All they wanted from us was a dance and a show and a laugh and a gimmick. All they wanted from us was a black face. All they wanted from us was what we did to make them money because all they wanted was entertainment 
And I'm tired of black America putting on a show for somebody else's expense. You are laughed at. You are talked about. You are criticized. You are left out. Friday, a group of young men, mild-mannered young men, walked out of St. John High School because they felt disappointed by the disingenuous staff of the school who played black music over the PA system and said this is black history celebration those young black men walked out of St. John saying we are more than a song in a shirt and the media got it wrong hell no they didn't walk out because they wanted rap music they didn't walk out because they wanted a shirt they walked out because they were standing on the fact we are more than what you want to present us as and the principal the COO Christopher Knight wrote a letter after he knew he had messed up by calling the police on these young black and brown and white children who were determined they were going to make a stand and in his letter he said we called the police because we were trying to protect them no you weren't trying to protect them you were trying to make sure that our insurgents didn't rise up. You were trying to make sure they didn't destroy your property because if they were there for the children, they would have been on airport highway with them, not in the school parking lot. These young men were not trying to start an insurrection. They were just trying to make a stand. Because what they were saying, y'all talk back to me, is that we are more than entertainers. That's, y'all talk back to me, that's why I'm bothered by 21st century portrait of blacks when I see young women on social media shaking their behind for likes and shares saying inappropriate stuff and wonder why they are not attracting premier men but attracting pimps what example are you leaving to your children when they see your post and wonder why they don't respect you let me speak to the black american and the latino and the women of color stop shaking your booty curves and start shaking your business card. Black America spends more money per year on entertainment than they do on education. We spend more money on Remy than we do on real estate. We spend more money popping bottles than we do promoting businesses. We can rap but we can't read. We can spit but we can't speak. You're lit but you're losing your children. You're smarter than that. Somebody find your praiser and tell them, I'm smarter than that. Tell somebody around you, I'm smarter than that. That was the wrong one. Find somebody else and tell them, I am smarter than that. That was the wrong one. Find somebody else and tell them, I'm smarter than that. Stop seeing yourself as just someone who can rock a mic and learn how to rock a pen and write your own paycheck, write your own dream, write your own business plan, write your future. Write your own story so no one else has to tell your story for you. 
Dr. Martin Luther King had a dream. He wanted to see justice. He led movements and fought for a cause. While he was fighting and leading Aisha marches, we had dogs loosed on us. You will see in some of the videos that they had dogs loosed on them. That we had water hydrants released on us. We, we just wanted something better. We never got what was promised, which is 40 acres and a mule. We have even gotten to the place where we have taken church for granted. We've taken God for granted. In 1955, in a Birmingham Baptist church, a bomb was released killing four young girls. Injuring between 14 to 22, the 16th Street Baptist Church, a place of worship, became a war zone, a murder scene. And people yet kept coming to church. We did not allow murders in a church to stop us. But Bishop Thompson, we've allowed a pandemic to frighten us we have been removed from church I feel Jesus and we have been removed away from God in the 21st century black family is noted in being called dysfunctional and I wanted to know what dysfunctional was because nowhere else in history of black America have we ever been called dysfunctional I wanted to know what dysfunctional was. I wanted to know what it was. Listen to what it is. It means not operating normal. We've allowed them to call us normal in a proper context. It means deviating from the norms of social behavior in a way regarded as bad. It, it was we we were called unaccountable we we were called misfits and monkeys we were called less than a human we were called everything but a child of God but where where did this come from where did dysfunctionality come from where where did being dysfunctional come from why do we now have programs for dysfunctional children dysfunctional families when we were never dysfunctional Martin Luther King never talked about dysfunctionality. Malcolm X never talked about dysfunctionality. Carter G. Woodson never talked about dysfunctionality. Thurgood Marshall never talked about dysfunctionality. Sojourner Truth never talked about dysfunctionality. Fannie Lou Hamer never talked about dysfunctionality. Rosa Parks never talked about dysfunctionality. Harriet Tubman never talked about dysfunctionality. Madam C.J. Walker never talked about dysfunctionality. Booker T. Washington never talked about dysfunctionality. Ida B. Wells never talked about dysfunctionality. W.E.B. Du Bois never talked about dysfunctionality. Frederick Douglass never talked about dysfunctionality. Mary McLeod Bethune never talked about dysfunctionality. Duke Ellington never talked about dysfunctionality. Jimi Hendrix never talked about dysfunctionality. Billy Holiday never talked about dysfunctionality. Maya Angelou never talked about dysfunctionality Simon of Cyrene who they made bear the cross of Jesus never talked about being dysfunctional Jesus Christ a black man from Nazareth never talked about dysfunctionality what gives you the right to talk about it
We. They were not dysfunctional. Here's my first point. They were displaced. You got to get this. They were not dysfunctional. They were displaced. Um, somebody needs to declare this and put this on the screen. I have not yet arrived. Y'all are quiet. Where I'm supposed to be. I am outside of my element. But I'm still close to El Shaddai. Uh, I, need, I need you to find somebody behind you and wave at them for the second time and say neighbor I am not dysfunctional I'm just outside of my element I am not where I'm supposed to be yet I am on my way the second thing I want to tell you according to verse two, Verses one through three, they were discouraged. Get this, but they were not disconnected. They, I wish I had a church. They knew that they were royalty. I need, I need somebody to get this and I'll feel better. I need you to look at your neighbor and tell them I am royalty. They, they knew that the deoxyribonucleic acid of their ancestors, the DNA of their ancestors ran through them. And you got to stop saying what's holding you back and talking about the people that's holding you back and learn how to celebrate the fact that can't nothing stop you now. I know it's improper, but I need you to find somebody and tell them can't nothing stop me now. That was the wrong one. Look at somebody else and tell them can't nothing stop me now I've come too far to be going backwards I'm going to get everything that God says I'm supposed to have they were discouraged but they were not disconnected And all of my discouragement have never allowed my discouragement to disconnect me from the God said who said, I've got your back. I need somebody to open up your mouth and declare, I serve a God who will always keep me. They, they were discouraged, but they were not discouraged connected look at this his third thing they, they looked defeated Zante more but they were not disconnected his third thing they looked defeated but they were determined I need you to find somebody that's behind you and say neighbor I know how I look but don't you allow how I look to determine who I really am. Turn me up, sound man. I, I need somebody to open your mouth and declare, I will not be determined by how bad I look and how difficult it seems. I'm going to be everything that God has ordained for me to be. They look defeated, but they were really determined. And they were saying, how can we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? Verse 5, if I forget the old Jerusalem, let my strong hand forget its gifting. Let my fingers fall off like leaves. And they said, we will never forget. Verse 6 says, if I forget and do not remember, let the tongue cleave to the roof of my mouth. Let my tongue turn black. If I prefer not Jerusalem above all the other joys that I have, I 
I need you to find somebody on your row and wave at them for the third time and say neighbor this joy that I have the world didn't give it and the world can't take it away that's why I scream like I do that's why I shout like I do that's why I worship like I do cause this joy that I have the world didn't give it tell somebody this joy that I have tell your neighbor this joy that I have tell your neighbor this joy that I have the world didn't give it my job didn't give it my man didn't give it my woman didn't give it this joy that I have the world didn't give it and the world can't take this joy away tell somebody I am royalty uh, tell them I, I am royalty and they got their joy back somebody shout I'm going to get my joy back that's why they sing songs like Jesus is a rock in a weary land shelter in the time of storm hold to his hands God's unchanging hand what can wash away my sins nothing but the blood they sang stuff like over my head I hear music in the air walk together children don't you get weary there's a great camp meeting in the promised land you cannot get to the promised land until you have gone through persecution the only way to the promised land is through persecution somebody ought to shout for the fact that they tried to destroy you shout for the fact they tried to take you out tell somebody I am royalty I know who I am I am God's elect somebody open your mouth and declare I am free I am changed I am set apart I am the first I'm a boss I'm independent I'm wiser I'm stronger I'm better open up your mouth and declare I am royalty find the praiser on your road let's get out of here and say neighbor I am royalty I'm not trash I'm not a crackhead I'm not an alcoholic I am royalty I'm righteous I'm blessed I'm peculiar I'm royalty I'm not a cancer patient I'm not an abused victim I am royalty I need every praiser to open up your mouth and scream I am royalty I need every praiser to open up your mouth and declare I am royalty I need you to lay hands on yourself tell yourself I survived every attack every storm every hurt somebody scream like you've lost your mind I am royalty come on I I'm trying, to, I'm trying to cause a disturbance in the atmosphere. I need every praiser to open up your mouth and start screaming. If you're watching at home, I need you to open up your mouth and declare, I am royalty. I need you to find you a praiser behind you and tell them, I am royalty. I'm starting a new revolution today. Your hands are lifted. I wish in the text I could show you and shout you on the fact that God's got a house and a car and a dream, but I need to tell you that you can only get what you can see. 
And I need somebody in this building to get your swag back and start declaring, I am royalty. Come on, I, I need y'all to stop acting like you're scared and open up your mouth and declare, I am royalty. Those young men at St. John were just trying to get their point across. They didn't know what they were going, they didn't know what their plan was. They just knew they needed to do something. And social media had it all wrong. They walked out because of a shirt and a song. That's not why they walked out. They walked out because they felt like they had been diminished to rap music and R&B and trap music. And they were saying, this is more than what we are. Young women, you're more than booty and boobs. You got a brain and use your brain. Stop flaunting. If you don't want them watching and looking at you like that, stop wearing stuff that's not conducive to being a classy lady. You want to be treated with class? Act like your class. Throughout all of 2020, every time I turned around, Kalisha, I kept seeing on Facebook, RIP. I want to start a new revolution today. Can we start a new revolution? Can we, can we, I need, I'm trying to find my crowd. Are y'all, are y'all listening to what I'm saying? Can we start a new revolution today? I'm trying to find, I, I wish y'all would agree with Can we start a new one? I'm starting a new revolution. I will not post RIP. When you're gone, I'm going to post L-Y-D, Larry, while you're living. L-Y-D, Aura, while you're living. L-Y-D, Kalisha, while you're living. L-Y-D, Ambrose, that means live your dream. I need somebody to just put L-Y-D on the screen. I, I need you to walk around all day declaring L-Y-D. I'm going to live my dream. This wasn't a shout you sermon today. How they were, dogs were leased on them. Dogs was loosed on them. Water hydrants sprayed on them. Bombs placed in their place of worship. Here in Psalm 137, they said, by the rivers of Babylon, there we sat down. Yea, we wept when we remembered Zion. We were so bad off, we gave up. Come on, your hands are lifted because I'm talking to somebody who gave up. Somebody who quit. I know you quit because you hung your heart. You, you forgot about your gifting. You forgot about your anointing. You forgot about your talent. You forgot how incredible you were. And God says, if you come back to me, come on, I need the worshipers all across this building. Come on, let's turn that volume up. I need every worshiper all across this building to open up your mouth. Come on, every worshiper, open your mouth, every worshiper, and say to God, I'm coming back with my dreams and my talents. I'm coming back with my heart, Mother Lewis, in my hand. I will never forget what the Lord did for me. I'll never forget what you did for me. Come on, your mouth is open. I'll never forget what you did for me. Come on, open your mouth. And say, I'll never forget what you, I'll never forget how you saved me and how, how you raised me and how you delivered me and how you set me free. Come on, lift those hands, everybody. There's a Booker T. Washington in you. There's a Fannie Lou Hamer inside of you. There's an Ida B. Wells inside of you. 
There's a Barack Obama inside of you. There's a Kamala Harris inside of you. Somebody has shout L-Y-D. Live your dream. Come on, your hands are lifted. Your mouth is open. Come on, every worshiper, every child of God, open your mouth and declare it. I've been royalty, but I've been held captive. Don't you complain about the people who have tried to hold you back. They don't understand how powerful you really are. And in the midst of all of your hurt and your pain, you're watching right now. And God is saying, what I'll do is I'll raise you up in the midst of your captivity. And I'll give you a new song. How can we sing the Lord's song? Come on, your hands are lifted right there in your home. Don't allow the color of your skin to degrade the content of your character. You are more than an entertainer. You're more than a Sambo. Carter G. Woodson talked about the Sambo. He said that the Sambo, Lady Joanne, was always the one that showed up last. They expect y'all to never be on time. And when you do get there, you're going to be loud and you're going to be the laugh of the party. That's why those young men at St. John said, we will not be your 21st century Sambo. Come on, I need worshipers in this building. I need worshipers in this building. And thank God for the kind of chief of police that we have who said they got a right to express themselves as long as they're not causing damage to property or people. Your hands are lifted. Adamande Kitai. Every worshiper, lift your hands and worship him. Lift your hands and worship him. Come on, every worshiper, lift your hands and worship him. Lift your hands and worship him. Lift your hands and worship him. Listen. They hung their harps in the willows. That's what they did. They hung their harps in the trees. They were done because they were carried away against their will. Don't let anybody do anything against your will. Your mind is what God wants it to be. Look at somebody and just tell them, nobody can have my mind. I'm not, I know, I know. Come on, look at them and talk to them. You've been scared to talk to them all day. Tell them, you, nobody will have my mind. Nobody will have my mind. We're standing all across this building. I'm getting ready to pray and extend an invitation to Jesus. If you're watching and you're not saved and you want to give your life to Jesus, there's no other name whereby men might be saved but the name Jesus. Somebody shout the name Jesus. There's no other name whereby men might be saved but the name Jesus. Somebody say Jesus. Can y'all shout that and make the devil nervous? Somebody shout Jesus. Come on, shout. Make the enemy nervous. Jesus. They said, how can we, how can we sing, Jamar, when you've taken us away 
against our will. You've, you've stripped us of our rights. And there in Babylon, they remembered who they were. I need you to find somebody to tell them, remember who you are. Today is the day that you remember who you are. You are royalty. Come on, point at your neighbor and tell them, you only pointed at them about three times a day. Point at them and tell them, you are royalty. Come on, look at them and tell them, you are royalty. Tell them, you are royalty. So, Father, we thank you now for your word that has already gone forth. Father, we bless you because you keep doing good things for us. Lord, I pray for your anointing to rest in Jesus' name. God, if there's anybody who's not saved, I want you to touch them right now. Whether they're in this room or they're watching around the world right now, I want you to touch them. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. And God, we praise you for what you will do, for how you will do it. Save them right now in Jesus' name. Amen. Listen, ask the people around you, say, hey, are you saved? Are you in church? If they're not, tell them this is a mighty good church for you. And tell them, ask them, say, hey, are you saved? Are you in church? Ask them, hey, they're giving their life to Jesus. If they have not, tell them this is a mighty good place for you. This is a mighty good movement. This is the mighty good place to be a part of. If you're watching and you're not saved, this is a wonderful chance to join an incredible moving body of Christ that's ready to go to the next level in God. We will be everything that God says we will be. Somebody shout hallelujah. Well, listen. Let me say this to everybody who's watching and in this room. I speak against anything that tries to rob you of who you are. Anything that tries to attack your mind and your spirit. First of all, God never gives the enemy access to your spirit. mess with your mind to try to confuse you in your spirit but the enemy does not have access to your spirit tell somebody he doesn't have access to it so I'm declaring today that you are free you are no longer held captive you are free and to all of my non friends and members of color while today was a message directed to African American and those people of color, don't you leave yourself out of the message. Because God has raised you up to be trailblazers with this culture. I'm, I'm tired of people talking about all white people are this way and all blacks are this way. No, there's a little bit of this and that in every culture and every race. And we thank God for the people who have partnered with us. Somebody shout hallelujah. As we get ready to give, I want you to know something about giving. Giving is God's prescription for the church. Just not God's prescription for the church. It's God's way of keeping the door open for the believer. Your tithe keeps you in right relationship with God financially. Meaning that God will keep opening doors for you when you keep honoring him. So the tithe, get this, is the Lord's. It's 10% of your income. I stopped giving 10% a long time ago. I just couldn't stay stuck at 10%. I stopped tithing a long time ago. I couldn't do it. I, I'm, I'm even in the midst of difficult times. I've learned to trust God with 20%, 25%, because that's what I need back from God. I've learned how to give based upon what I need God to do. Because you get ready to prepare your tithe online, we get ready to prepare.
prepare our tithe and our offering in this room. Your tithe and your offering is going to go in the same basket. Your bishop's offering is going to go right in my hand. Your first fruit is going to go right in my hand. And as you get ready to get God bless you, Brian Hall here. And, and I wanted to pause to say to all of you, our listening audience, how grateful we are for you. You know, we don't get a chance often to tell you thank you for how diligent and patient, steadfast and consistent you have been as our online church. You have been as much of a blessing to us as we have been to you. And I want to pause to thank all of you at this time of giving for your tithe and your offering. You know, the Bible says in Malachi, bring ye all the tithe and offering to the storehouse that they may be meat in my house. You know, we have to understand the principle of tithing is real simple, that we don't pay tithe, we simply return it. The tithe is a principle by which God uses to bless us. Give and it shall be given back to you, pressed down, shaken together, running over in good measure, shall men give unto your bosom. And we as a people of God are practitioners of faith through our giving. And the Bible says, man, would a man rob God? Yeah, you have robbed me in tithe and in offering. Today, I want you to make a considered effort not to be that robber, not to be that thief, but to honor God. If you are a member of another church, your tithe goes to your ministry. It goes to that church where your membership is for the support of that ministry. If you are a frequent guest of our church and you don't have a church home, one, we'd like for you to become a part of our family. But we'd like you to practice the art of tithing or the gift of tithing into our ministry. We believe that we're good ground. You know, tithing is only 10% of your income which means God gives you 100% and only requires you to return 10% of it back. You don't pay tithe, you don't give tithe, you simply return it. And I'm asking that today you would be a part of our giving family. Would you consider doing that? The giving prompts are right here on the screen and I, I want you to follow those. There's several ways that you can give to the Greater New Psalmist Church. There's several ways that you can be a blessing. And I want you right now, I want you right now to offer to God that 10% by partnering with that ministry. The ministry that God has blessed you with called Greater New Psalmist Church. We love you and we thank God for you. And I pray a blessing over your life that the Lord will make you rich and there will be no sorrow added to it. So Father, I thank you for every person that's sowing their seeds of faith in offering and even those that are returning the tithe. Maybe they've never done it. Maybe, oh God, they're doing it again. But I pray that you would multiply their gifts. Let it return back to them and bless their entire family. We thank you for the overflow. In Jesus' name, amen. Receive our Come on, let's stand. Let's stand. God bless you. Bless you. Bless you. I, uh, I want, before Elder Roberts comes, I want the bishop to come. If you will bring the bishop around. Bring the bishop around. Bring the bishop around. Bishop Thompson is one that I really appreciate. And I say to him, I say to him publicly that I appreciate his anointing. And I appreciate this weekend, I appreciate the academic excellence that you really walk in. That your ability to do what you're doing and academics and what you will write I'm believing it will change 
the scope of the church. That you will show the world continuously what it means to have the academy and the anointing married together as one. So many cultures and so many instances we see either or you're either academic or you are anointed. God is raising up a generation of academic anointing. you that after several earned degrees already, you go back, get this earned doctoral degree, put yourself back in the classroom as a father, distinguished pastor. You didn't need the degree. Your church is already growing one of the fastest in the city of Indianapolis. You and your wife have been successful in businesses and buildings and you've been an entrepreneur. And, and you didn't, but, but you said something that, that blessed me. You said... God is challenging me to go write a prescription for the ills of the church. And sir, I, I appreciate you for that. I'm grateful to be uh, chosen by you to be on your committee. I'm grateful that we're able to get through this. And I'm excited about what God is going to do in your life. He's coming back. Y'all want to hear him preach, don't you? He's coming back to preach in a few weeks. As I take a little time to kind of, you know, relax a little bit in the month of March, uh, I'm going to be around, but I want him to come back and preach this. Because many of you have never heard the bishop preach. Uh, and many of you who are watching, you've never heard him. But I want you to welcome. He's going to come and just greet us real quick. And the elder's going to come and pray. But he's going to come and greet us in his own way. Y'all receive the honorable bishop Stephen Thompson. His wife, Lady Joanne, is here with us. And... Um, come here, Joe, so they can just see you real quick. Y'all put one of them cameras on her. She's going to come come stand with you. Come stand with him. Come on, y'all. Let's thank God for them. Praise the Lord, everybody. I greet you all in the name of Jesus from Indianapolis, Indiana. Not my first time here, but I'm so glad to be here on a Sunday morning to worship God with you. I brought here my girlfriend for 32 years. With my boo thing. I thank God for her. Why don't you have something to say to me? Praise the Lord, everybody. Wasn't that a dynamic message on today? It blessed my soul. We have to remember who we are and who created us. He created us just a little bit lower than the angels, and he crowned us with glory. So don't forget, live your dreams, because God has crowned you with glory. Amen. I thank God for my wife, and I want to say this. I thank God for the bishop. He is one of the best friends I have, an incredible man of God, not just an incredible preacher, not just a man of integrity, but he's a man that I trust. I told him some years ago, he was around my wife and my daughters. He said, man, what is it about you? Why, why do you trust me like that? Do you really trust me? And I said to him, if I let you around my jewels, I trust you. And my kids and my wife, they love this man to death. I have a grandson. My wife and I, we have a grandson. His birthday is today. And his name is Seth Breon Hall. They didn't name him after granddaddy. They named it after him. And so we celebrated. We love this man of God abundantly. And y'all love on him. Treat him good. Y'all have a man who with the heart and the mission of God. And like my wife said, it is an incredible message. And I thank you for the message that you preached to us today. And Lord says the same. I will be back to share with you all again. Can I just do this as I go? Ronnie. Lord, you are good. You've been so good. Lord, you are good. You are better than good. I can praise you enough. I owe you my life. Can't praise you enough. Even if I try, Lord, you've been so 
good to me. God bless you. You've been so good. You've been so good. You've been so good to me. You're standing. Listen, we're getting ready to pray. Bishop, um, Bishop said to me when he gets in defense, he said, he said, how's, how's, how's defense going to be? And I told him about some of the characters in the room. And I said, now, when you get in that room, some of them, one who's your core faculty advisor is a really nice guy. I said, but you won't know him when you get in that room. Um, and uh, the dean, who is a nice fella, you, you ain't going to know him when you get in that room. And what I didn't tell you is that I'm your friend and your brother, but you ain't going to know me when you get in that room. <laughs> Today, we want to help thank God for... Uh, Victoria, who's in uh, Virginia, Victoria Horner, Nett, who's celebrating her birthday. Let's thank God for Nett. She's watching in Virginia this morning, and we say happy birthday to you, Nett. We're thankful to God for you, and I want us, as you pray this morning, I want us to pray for the health of Deacon Lewis. I don't, I don't want y'all to ask me any questions. I don't want you to ask me what's going on. Don't ask mother. We just want to pray for his health, and we want to declare healing over your body and over your life. In Jesus' name, we declare that. Amen. We're continuing to pray for uh, Mother Lincoln and Julian Mack. And I want to thank God that the Toledo Public Schools have really learned how to do it as it relates to African Heritage Month and how they've been celebrating the children. And I was fortunate this week uh, to be asked by Yvonne Martin, who is one of the um, specialists with uh, Toledo Public Schools, uh, to speak on that Black History Month. They did more than singing and dancing and rapping. They talked about the history and the success of our people. And I salute she and uh, the superintendent of our schools who uh, they're just doing a phenomenal work. And all of you who work in the educational system, we thank God for all of you. Sheila, we're praying for your family and for your sister who is still battling with COVID. And we lost another preacher this week in Augusta, Georgia, uh, and we want you to pray for his family. Uh, and of course, we again say happy birthday to Janelle and to Tyra, who just celebrated their birthdays. We thank God for you. Uh, and we wish you many, many more. Lift those hands. I want you to just say these words after me. God, I thank you for what you have done and what you will do and what you're going to say. Come on, elder, we get ready to pray. Come on, I want you to lift your voices for the next several moments and open up your mouth. We ain't shout at all service. Let's get one in. I want you to find a reason to praise God. Open up your mouth and bless him. Come on, I feel churchy. I told the bishop today was a wrong day for my preaching. I was going to be civil rights, but can I just be saved for about 35 seconds and blood washed for 40 seconds? Is there anybody that can look back over your life and thank God for where he brought you from? Wave at your neighbor for the fourth time and say, neighbor, it's just another day that the Lord has kept me. Find a praise and tell him just another day that the Lord has kept me. Tell him when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that is done for me, my soul. Jesus we thank you Jesus hallelujah God is not only a keeper but he's a healer oh we thank you Jesus for your keeping spirit we thank you for your healing spirit Jesus we thank 
thank you, Lord God, for the oil that heals. The oil that delivers and set us free, Jesus. We thank you, Lord God. We thank you for what you're doing today, Lord. We're thanking you for every prayer request, Jesus. Hallelujah. That's in the sacred urn, Lord God. Hallelujah, Jesus. That you are meeting the needs of your people, Lord. You're hearing the cries of your people, my God. Oh, Lord God, you're healing the hearts. You're strengthening the minds. You're strengthening the bodies, Lord God, of your people, Jesus. For we know, Lord, that our help is in you, Lord. Our trust is in you, Jesus. Our deliverance is in you, Lord God. It's not in man, but Jesus is in you, Lord. So we're turning to you today, Lord. And we're crying out unto you, Lord God, to wash our hearts, Lord. To cleanse our spirit and our mind, Lord God. To renew the right spirit in us, Lord God. For when we come before your throne of grace, Jesus, we're asking that you answer our prayers, Lord. For our nation needs healing, Lord. Our churches need need healing Lord God our families need healing Jesus we need deliverance in the land today Lord God we're lifting up the sick in this house Lord God Deacon Lewis Lord God Deacon McCreary Lord God mothers and our sisters and our brothers Lord God we're lifting them up Jesus and we're asking you to heal Lord God you know what's going on in their bodies you are the healer you are the solvent Lord God uh, that you can heal Lord and you can solve every issue Jesus and you can bring them out Father and I'm thanking you in advance for it Lord God we're thanking you today Lord for what you're doing in this house Jesus with every prayer request what you're doing Lord you're meeting the needs Lord you're turning the situations around you're pulling down the strongholds you're breaking the chains you're opening up the doors Uh, oh Lord God you're bringing us together you're uniting us together Lord God to stand on our post Lord to give you worship and to give you praise Lord you're empowering us today Lord God to make a stand Jesus and our stand is to cry out unto thee Lord for whatever we're dealing with whatever we're going through whatever we're facing Lord God we're still gonna give you glory we're still gonna give you honor we're still gonna lift you up and magnify your name Jesus for you are king of kings and Lord of lords and you are Jehovah Jireh our Jehovah Nisi and our Jehovah Shalom you are the healer you are the restorer of the breach Lord you're restoring our mind our spirit and our soul Lord God and we'll never leave this place we'll never leave you the same Lord we shall continue to bless your holy name let's put our hands together and give God praise hallelujah look at your neighbor tell him I'm royalty look at him and tell him I am royalty tell him don't play with me I royalty open your mouth and scream I'm the first not the last I'm the head look at your neighbor and just introduce yourself tell them that's who I am don't play with me tell them don't play with me Tell them don't play with me. I just had a flashback. I just remembered where the Lord brought me from. I just remembered the door that the Lord opened. I just remembered how he healed me. I just remembered how he delivered me. I just remembered how he brought me out. And every chance I get, I've got to open my mouth and scream, thank you for making me royalty. Thank you for laying your hands on my life. Tell 
somebody, I'm royalty. That's who I am. I, I'm royalty. L-Y-D. Live your dream. Tell somebody, live. Live your dream. No matter what the devil does. Live your dream. No matter what they say. Live your dream. Talk to power. Light on. Live your dream. Live. Live your dream. I find yourself. Tell yourself. I'm going to live my dream. Find a place that's behind you. And say, neighbor, I almost quit. But I'm going to live.
you're tired of church as usual and you're looking for something invigorating, exciting with passion, then the Greater New Psalmist Baptist Church, 3251 Glendale, is the place for you. We are a people that's determined to occupy all streets while cultivating cultural change. The only thing's missing is you. Meet us at 3251 Glendale Avenue as we continue to be relevant and occupy all streets while cultivating cultural change. Everybody, it is so exciting to talk about prayer. Yes. Prayer is the heart's sincere desire, unuttered and unexpressed. The Bible talks about the fact that men should always pray. Mm -hmm. And y'all, I'm so excited about our new prayer season. You see who I'm sitting with is our prayer ambassador, Elder Sheila Roberts, oh. who is the prayer warrior herself. Been praying for generations and curses and to be broken and people to be blessed. Y'all, we're excited about this new season of when men pray, but she's also going to be launching when women pray. Wow. When women and men pray, the family is getting ready to come together. Amen. Elder Roberts, are you excited about when women pray? Yes, I am. I'm so excited. I'm, a, I'm excited about just touching our voices coming together and us touching and agreeing in prayer about the things, the cares of women's hearts, you know, our loved ones, our family, um, jobs, everything women has a heart for. We're going to be lifting those things up and praying before God and believing. And I'm telling you, thanks to God, when women come together and we touch and agree and we're on one accord, there's an explosion of power that's getting ready to be released in the earth realm. We're getting ready to see lives change. And when women pray and men praying at the same Ooh. time, something is going to shake the universe. She's going to be joined by phenomenal prayer warriors across the country. Yes. Pastor Karen Doan, Sister Weomi Bill, Winston-Salem, North Carolina, um, Pastor uh, Kim Sadler from Lake Jackson, Texas, yes. and Lady Michelle Sharp from Detroit, Michigan, and uh, several leaders around the length and breadth of our country, Joanne Thompson of Indianapolis, Indiana, and so many others are going to be joining. Pastor Christine Chavis. It's going to be wow. just phenomenal, the women that are coming together, and of course those that are right here in our church, uh, yes. Vanita yes. Moore and Aura Eaton and Judy Tillman and Mother Potter and all the other prayer warriors in our ministry that are going to be coming together, these ministers of the gospel. And of course, we're going to have some women who are going to be praying who are not ministers, but they're going to be on that line. There's some powerful women in our church and around mm -hmm. our country, and I'm so excited. It is when men pray and when women pray. It's going to be the third Sunday night in January at 8 o'clock p.m. The conference numbers for both calls are gonna be on the screen. So hey, if you're in the home with a man, he goes in one room and you pray. Or if you're in the home with a woman, she goes in another room. We're gonna be having a wonderful time when men pray and when women pray. It's gonna be powerful. The third Sunday night in January at 8 p.m. when men pray and when women pray. It's gonna be exciting. We'll see you there when men and women come together and pray. During a pandemic, every move you make comes with risk. I won't be there for long. We're all like family. We all feel fine. Maybe you get away with it once, twice, but what happens when your luck runs out? Until we're all protected, limit your risk and stay safe, Ohio. Okay, so there's a lot going on in this crazy world right now, so I'm gonna give it to you straight. We gotta wear masks. Some people love them, some people don't. All that matters is that when you're out and about, you've got one on. Wearing masks lowers the chance of someone can sit. It's that simple. So wear a mask, like this one, or this. Nope, not that. Okay, that one works. It's how we continue to take care of one another. So listen, Ohio, rise to the task, wear a mask. Dr. Bree, thank you for that powerful word. Were you blessed by it?